Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Yeah. Who do we got here today? Uh, we are the, <laughs> the Sklar, Sklar Brothers. Sklar Bros. Sklar here. One of the biggest podcasts, maybe of all time. You guys were OGs in that world. We OGs, are. we started it. It's crazy because, you know, we started doing stand-up, you know, 25 years ago or 1995, 94. I mean, the first time we ever stepped on a stage we was 1987. But, like, we did it in earnest from, like, 93 on. We have not stopped from that point on. And you can't see podcasting come around the corner. You don't know that that's what you're going to do. And you don't know that you get into that. And that's really going to become a major portion of I mean, our we, life. So well, we were saying, that, oh, yeah, sorry. In the early years, like when podcasts first started, it almost was embarrassing to say, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have uh, a podcast. Have a podcast. Yeah. You whisper it. I have yeah. herpes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're like, you can get that treated. Right. You know? No, yeah. but it's like, just it your podcast doesn't spread to everyone you know. We and had all, a podcast all, that laid dormant for a while and yeah, then it came, yeah. came back. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Rogan's making ninety million dollars a year, and everyone's like, oh, "I'm going to start a fucking oh, podcast." Yes. Bro. I mean, if you if you do it right, it reaches people in a way like you guys are doing, and it reaches people in a way that. So we did radio. So so we did a sh our show Cheap Seats mm -hmm. on, on ESPN, on ESPN Classic, yeah. which is like mystery science for your people who may not know. It was that, fucking great. Yeah, was great. Great. That was one of my you. favorite shows, and I don't know why that just didn't keep going for because 15 ESPN years. doesn't know what the fuck they, they don't know. They don't know what we did doing. seventy-seven episodes for season. That's a lot. And yeah. we got to cover a lot of stuff. It was really fun. Uh, and then we came out of that and we started guest hosting Jim Rome's radio show. Which oh, you walk awesome. into that, it is the jungle. You walk in, like, we were actually so dumb when we first, like, we didn't know enough about it to be scared to walk into that situation because they're a rabid fan. I mean, those are the most rabid fans that you can ever and have. And that guy Jim. was like the Alex yeah. Jones of sports he back was, in the day. Like, he, send him to their fucking house. I right. want you to burn Tannehill's house exactly. down. Like, whoever's <laughs> like, you're, like done. you're done. You're done. I'm yeah. running you. I'm running you. This call's over. Like, and so it was a very, like, you either kill or be killed in that, in that scenario. And we were like, you know what? We're just going to go in and do the show that we want to do. And so we started to do that. And so out of that came the idea to do a weekly sports and comedy podcast because we're like, we already kind of do that when we guest host Rome show. What if what would it look like if we created our own version of that and we can do whatever we want? Exactly. Yeah. You have no oversight. Nobody no. telling you. It's great. I don't like that. That that won't work. Yeah. And you start. But then again, the oversight comes when you start to realize, oh, we need to change this around. We need to do this a little better. Like we need to jump into things quicker or and we realized we were breaking down down absurd stories in the sports world and then we're like wait there's some really funny store news stories of people doing dumb shit we're talking about like the woman whose arm got stuck in her toilet because she was trying to get her live strong bracelet and back. she's on her sure. front lawn with the fucking fire department coming to like oh or the yeah. guy but, who, I, but to be honest when i bought that bracelet if i would have lost it yes yeah, same like, thing whole arm goes in i was all in on lance at that time that's right and i believed in the one ball that bracelet meant the fucking world. Well, so so I Lance, never took it off. We one, said Lance Armstrong to lie to everyone. We would say about Lance Armstrong, the ball on that guy, the ball on <laughs> that guy, <laughs> to lie to everyone. So really, <laughs> but it, but so out of that came this other podcast, which has you know grown exponentially. Dumb People Town, where we break down dumb people's dumb behavior because we uh, believe the world's getting dumber. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You guys have endless content now, uh, endless. especially with AOC in office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, uh, all politics. <laughs> Politicians across Pol the board. Right now, it's crazy. I feel like politicians right now on every political spectrum are yeah, dumber now than they've ever been. And prouder ever. to be dumb. Yeah. Let Look, me be louder. I don't give a, yeah. What do you mean facts? Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. So, no, this is what I think. So the, yeah, and so the idea, but the crazy thing is that oh, both sides think the other side is dumb. It doesn't matter yeah. where you are. Yeah. Like you're an idiot. And it's almost like dumb people are like, you're an idiot for be for trying to be so smart. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, because oh God, in dude. some ways, like, there, there are smart people going, like, laying in bed at night going, okay, we're past the point of being able to save the environment. In I'm not getting years, sleep tonight because I'm worrying about I'm all worrying this shit. I'm worrying about polar ice caps melting. Which, by the way, like, very true, very real. It's fucking happening. Then but, there like, are people who are like, I'm going to eat a Tide Pod and go ride a jet ski this weekend, and that's all they're worried about. And you know what? Yep. You're better off. You're yeah, quality he's a happier life. Dude. That's, that's what I say. He's, he's, he's one he's of the happier. dumbest people you'll ever he's meet. So happy. <laughs> but he's the happiest guy <laughs> on the planet. Are like, you happy? Absolutely. There you go. So, Every so, day he wakes up. I'll show you a picture of my jet ski. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dead serious. <laughs> I'll eat a Tide Pod right in front now. of you. <laughs> but the Keep idea playing. is that, like, you know, but the point is, and by the way, there is something to be learned from both sides. Obviously, we got to be smart about what we're fucking doing. If you have kids and you're inheriting this this earth, you got to be smart. But also, you got to enjoy your 
life because we're only on this planet for a brief period of time. You guys get that. Right. So it's like, it's cool to kind of explore all those sides in this other podcast we do, Dumb People Town. But, I mean, there's shit happening from, from a sports perspective because we still do our show. It used to be called Scarborough Country. Now it's called View from the Cheap Seats. But, like, the, I mean, you think about, we were, th- we were talking about this today on our way over here. We are talking about LeBron. Fucking, okay. I don't know if you guys I, by, LeBron. By the way, so we, we host a sports show here on Drinking yeah. Bros every Wednesday. Okay. Hate LeBron. Right. So never have liked LeBron so, since and day I get fucking that. one. And you're an Ohio guy. I am. So, so I, I mean, that's pers- a big statement. Personally, I was always like, I love what LeBron does. I'm yeah, not same. so sure about the guy. Like, I'm, I, but I love what he does and same. I love what he brings. Same, I mean, yeah. if you want to put him in a category to understand in a sports context. Aaron Judge is 6'7", maybe 250, 260. Yeah, okay? he's a big boy. 6'7", 260, and he's the biggest guy in baseball. You look at him come up to bat, and you're like, you're a fucking giant. You look at LeBron is 6'8", 265. Yeah. So he's an inch taller and just more solid. Yeah, yeah, he's bigger. So you, you say to yourself, this guy's just a Mack truck. He's Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan. He's all these things wrapped up in one. He's amazing. But his decision to come, we're trying to understand, your decision to come to the Lakers – and was, was not team. to win no, the championship. To do the production it was company, purely man. to do it. the production company starring in Space Jam. He's already sitting out the rest of the season. So He's here's, got two years left. Here's what it is. We figured it out. It is Samuel L. Jackson in the Capital One commercials. Because you're like, I love the things that Samuel L. Jackson did in the past. I, I love, love Pulp Fiction. I love it. <laughs> right. I love the Spike Lee But I'm not want, getting a fucking Capital One card. No, like, <laughs> I don't want it. But this is what we're remembering. Like, I don't want to hear him say, what's in your wallet? I want to hear him say, reach what's in that bag. What's in your wallet, motherfucker? I yeah. want to yeah. say, reach in that bag and pull out my wallet. It's the one that says, oh, bad dude. motherfucker on it. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. You know so the Capital thing? One, if you have any balls at all, guys, so you Reach in that bag and pull out your motherfucking wallet. Christ, it says bad guys. motherfucker. But, it, but it's that moment where you go, you know, this is your legacy, okay? This is what this is the most recent thing you're doing. We're all gonna remember this. I mean, it's amazing the shit he got to go down to Miami and 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 sort of start his basically his championship run down in Miami because I felt like he shouldn't have gotten shit because Kevin Durant and I mean Kevin Garnett had gone from Minnesota. He tried to, to Boston, do everything yeah. he could there to Boston and he wins. And no one gives Kevin Garnett any shit I didn't, whatsoever. I didn't have any None. problem uh, with LeBron Miami. going to Miami at all. Me either. And I then thought he comes that was back great. to Cleveland and he wins. I'm like, dude, you have an, a Hall of Fame first ballot. You're one of the greatest players of all time. You have that career. Why, like, finish your career playing basketball in Cleveland and play three or four more years, and then you got time to come out and do Or, the and I'll, this is the last wrench I'll throw, because we, we've raged on LeBron Fine, for sure. hours and yeah, hours and hours. Okay. The last one I'll throw in this. Or if you're trying to truly win championships yep. year in and year out, yep, the best fit, what we said on our show, was, was Philly. It was all young guys. Yeah, dude. You put him in the mix. You didn't yep. need Jimmy Butler. No. Uh, even that Tobias Harris trade. Great. You're good to go with that starting five. Yeah, yeah dude. All those guys are young. But then I you have he, the veteran, and but you could have just dominated. Maybe, but imagine think, if he came to the Clippers. Yeah. Still in L.A. So, that seriously. team, yeah. those guys. Yeah. So I went, to a Clip, I went to a Clippers game, and I watched them play. Uh, you watched them play a good OKC, team. and it was a great game back and forth, and, and the Clippers won. I was like, Clippers man, are scrappy. They're scrappy. With a guy like that. With well, with LeBron, LeBron with like gosh, a yeah. true end-of-the-game scorer, like a yeah. guy who can take you through the third and fourth quarter. But I would have loved if he went to the Knicks. We had Blake Griffin on our podcast. The Knicks would have been good, too, and, but they're going to have Zion Williamson soon. Maybe, so. but we talked to Gilbert Arenas yesterday. We saw him in Did he in pull a gun studio. on you at all? He did not. That was... <laughs> that was but he uh, did yell hibachi. He yelled uh, hibachi, which was weird. <laughs> we were talking to him, and he's like, Zion Williamson is going to suck in the NBA. And I'm like, what? How do you, what do you, you obviously know more than I do. You know, you, you've been in the league. He's like, how tall is he? I'm like, I don't know. He's 6'6". Six, six, okay? If you measure him up, he's going to be 6'6". Charles six. Barkley. Charles Barkley. But he doesn't have a shot. He's got no shot. Like, Charles Barkley had an outside shot. He could hit a three. I mean, Charles Barkley. He's like Zion dunks and gets putbacks on his misses. Right. And his free throws and three-pointers look shaky. I mean, shaky. It, you can see that motion of right. willing you, it in every single time. And you say time. to yourself, can he push around NBA guys? Is he going to push around... Like Joel Embiid, yeah, or Giannis. No, he's not going to. So you say to yourself, okay, what's his value going to be? So he's going to go number one, and Gilbert he's Arenas. like he can't play the four and he can't play the five in the NBA. So he can kind of play the three, but who's he going to guard? You going to? He's, he's not really a two. Is he going to? Is he going to guard Durant? No. Is he, he going to guard uh, LeBron or Westbrook? No, he reminds can me he of a Sean Kemp. 
It's kind of who he reminds me of. Kemp was 6'10". Six, six yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah like, with like not a Shetland as many kids. Sean Kemp. Like with, not as many kids. with not as many kids. No. Well, not yet. <laughs> Give I him mean, some time. I mean, we were in Seattle, and we, we stood up on the Space Needle. We looked out, and we were like, it's just beautiful to see all How this. great would it be to have a tour of Seattle of, a all, of, tour of all of Sean Kemp's kids? I mean, <laughs> maybe you could be in every neighborhood. It's like a 12-hour walking tour. <laughs> I bet you one of those high-rises, like one floor is just all of his kids. The money just goes directly into the How is that not a reality show? The kids oh, of Kemp. God. Or Cromartie. Kid, Anthony Cromartie. Cromartie's kids. I, they, he did have a reality show. He's got did. nine, right? It's a simple show. Well, it's called What's My Name. Nine or ten. Yeah, yeah. nine or ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we all don't really know. We don't really know how many I, kids two we kids have. And I doubt it sometimes. I'm like, who are you again? <laughs> yeah. what, well, with you guys, who's the, who's the most attractive here out of the out of the two? Out uh, of the two of us? Yeah. It's me. Right? Is it? I, I don't know I'm why. I'm an attractive guy. more... I'm an attractive guy. I don't take care of myself like... Like he does. I don't. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't have a mustache game as tight. That's, that's the real kicker. Yeah, right? The fucking the mustache, mustache game. Stash, dude. I I don't mind rocking the stash at times. Steve Lemmy be, came in yesterday and he had a sweet ass. Oh, he's yeah. got a great. Yeah, he's, well, he's doing great it for one. Tacoma. Yeah, 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 Tacoma yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, and those guys are great. Uh, I'll put you just thing. have it like because you like it when people come up to you and go, "Are you a cop?" That's right. I like you. We can give you some cop gear if you want. Yeah, we can. We get you some creds. I love to tase. Just tase people. We get you on a force too. Actually, Jack was Jack. Jack Osborne, our buddy, is a reserve is he? police officer here reserve. in LA. So San Diego. Or San there Diego. Yeah, San Diego. Diego. Reserve in San Diego. Isn't is there a Steven safer Seagal? job than that? No. <laughs> Steven, Se- no. Isn't Steven Seagal a reserve? Oh, yeah. Reserve? yeah. So I think he's Jack a sheriff, Miami, actually. Right? Where is Seagal? Seagal? Like in New Mexico. So do you want to hear a great Seagal oh. story? Oh. Yeah. Do you have a Seagal story? Yes, we do. We fucking do. Drop a Seagal story. Okay, we'll drop it on So we wrote a show with a buddy of ours and with Bill Lawrence, who created Scrubs, Uh, for Warner Brothers, and we were going to take it out to sell it, and it was, originally we had sort of written it for Val Kilmer to play himself, but then we didn't know if we could get him, and so we kind of were looking down the list of guys who we thought we could get, and we're like, this would be funny if it was Steven Seagal. So we wrote a version for Steven Seagal, we said, let's have a meeting with the guy and just see what he's like. We've heard crazy stories, right? Okay. The craziest, yeah. right? So he shows up. He's and in like a gi. He's right? dead. <laughs> right? He's a kimono. His, his, kimono. kimono. his, his yeah. hair is painted on. Like painted, sprayed on. Sprayed on. I'm like, do they even make that product anymore? <laughs> he's wearing the Amber Vision glasses. It's Ron like, Popeil, the, the spray yeah. hair thing. Yeah, he's he's got six HD five. Amber, <laughs> okay, Amber he's, glasses. He's six five and he is definitely pushing three spins, okay? Like he's this a, dude is oh, like yeah, yeah, 285. For sure, and he's wearing like like steel tipped like cowboy boots. So he comes in, and he's got a guy with him that's maybe five eight and small, like a little rock though, like a rock of like a German dude who has a camouflage backpack that he's wearing on his front. Now, Seagal only flies private. Okay, of course. Because, so there's like, yeah. well, he also has to carry his weapons. Like there's so weaponry. <laughs> in I'm like, this if bag. we opened up this bag, there'd be Chinese throwing stars, grenades, fucking like, I don't know what's in there. Okay, <laughs> like landmines and shit, like <laughs> hand right Give me a grenade. Give me yeah. a grenade. Yeah, but what do you think his head? assistant's name was? Uh, we didn't know. He, 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 Hans. He Hans, didn't say Hans, 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 please. Grenade, Grenade please. Hans. And he's just standing in the back. He's not saying a word. And I'm like, that guy has killed The quieter many he gets, we're like, the, the, I am this so, guy's making me so uncomfortable. He's probably like a GSG-9 guy or something like that. <laughs> yeah. that Homeboy yeah. higher. I have yeah, no idea Like thumb to the neck, yeah. dead. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. If he just second. does, you're dead. Like, he just does this, and you're like, you you're see, dead. You see, I'm going like, opposite. because what? Seagal, you, like, uh, you think he's just for posture? No, 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 no. I think I think he, like, he he did all, you know, 35 levels of Seagal's karate school in his hometown <laughs> and now this he's made him head of his security he's Segal paid so much money like, Segal doesn't hang out with real warriors like I know I see him show up at SHOT Show he's not hanging out with anybody cool what, like, do you think that his karate academy is a lot like Donald Trump's university yes. it's, yeah it's that or it's more like or Rex Kwondo like or <laughs> Rex Kwondo <laughs> or, or you like, know he's got a strip mall it's, yeah. it's Seagal's you know or like karate Putin, academy or like Putin playing like, hockey I love those like self defense Things like come at me with your arm high, you know the way a, a guy would always come at and put your left arm and on my waist down. and then try to hit me on like, the shoulder. You know, like, like this like guy too. Like as he's going through Seagal's program, he keeps talking to Steven mm-hmm. with situations from the movies as if they really yeah. happened. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So he's really talking to him about so what happened. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Can, Casey can I ramp back? this up a notch? Yeah, yeah. Do I, it. I, and I, you're probably like, what the fuck is he on his phone? Steven Seagal wanted to do this movie I directed. I have his fucking phone number. Call him up. My God. Is this we're we're rolling on this, right? Are you really gonna call him? You're just gonna call him and say what? I don't know what I'm gonna say. (laughs) 
I wonder if he'll answer. He may remember us. <laughs> you, you, you started because it's. <laughs> It's 11.30. Hey, is this Steven? Who's this? This is Ross Patterson from uh, Drinking Bros Podcast. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That was him! He answered! (laughs) Dude, he just sent a Chinese throwing star in your direction. Like, there's going to be... There's going to be no, 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 no. There's gonna be a knock at the door. You're going to open up. It's going to be a Chinese story. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be spinning in the air outside the door waiting for oh you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Je- Jesse, shit. can you lock that no, door? No, that was him. No lie. Like, that I was, was him. sweating. There was a little bit of fear that was in my... Him. Like, that was him. I was like, ah, that was two was years ago. Him. And he now has your number. So <laughs> he's not our buddy. So let us finish this story. <laughs> so we. So he comes in for this meeting. He's going to go look up Drink It Bros and then see these guys talking oh, shit God. about him. So, so you guys are dead, too. So oh. just, we're dead, too. I don't know why you guys are giving him so much credit. This last movie he did, my buddy was on, and like they had a it's body double for him the I whole movie. That's because he weighs 600 him. pounds. I can't believe <laughs> You just call them. So he so he comes in and he sits down and there's like we're like where's he gonna sit and he sits he's like I gotta sit in this chair with like it was a little higher up and it was on the end with armrests on it. We're, we're like, like why do you have to sit in that? He's chair? like and he said in all seriousness in case I have to pounce. And he made this motion. We're, we're like, like no in, way. In, a, what in a general in a, meeting in a you, meeting are you gonna have to pounce? So then he proceeds to tell us that he is a descendant a direct, direct descendant, descendant of he said Genghis Khan which I'm like <laughs> isn't it Genghis Khan? I'm like Khan? am I pronouncing it wrong or is he pre- is everybody pronounced like if he is a direct descendant maybe he knows better than us a direct descendant of Genghis, Genghis Khan wow Genghis. And, Genghis. And, then, Genghis. and we went Genghis. down the road and pitched this show with him. Sold it to the sold, sold it to Warner, Warner Brothers, Brothers with him. Like he was sitting where you are with me right now, and he's like saying some crazy shit, and I'm trying to take what he's saying and turn it into comedy. And it was well, it would be like uh, Life with Busey or whatever the fuck that show was. I'm yeah. with Busey. This, yeah. I'm, I'm with Busey. Busey. Yeah. Except like, it was like a narrative show, yeah. like this a, was a narrative show about a guy. So it, it's crazy. It turned out it didn't work out because I guess it didn't vet through with him, but. Yeah. Like and with him or the people up at Warner Brothers, were like, we can't do that. We can't. We, can't, we don't guy. know. We can't. He's unpredictable. You don't know. Oh, what he's oh yeah. Do I, I mean, look. I mean, look. He just a answered why. your call. He just answered my phone call. Yeah. though. So maybe On he's kind of predictable. Ring, <laughs> anyway, it was just it was an insane like two it's times crazy. that we hung with this guy, and I was like, there is so much going on with him. The problem is, it, it, hypothetical. Let's say that that show does go. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know that you get past episode three that's just because they, production would be shut down so many times. That's it. So back you in the said it. back in the day, I, I did a movie with uh, Busey. Yeah. Um, but like old school Busey, like two thousand one, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it was, he was still like, still, yeah. "Holy shit, this is the guy from Point Break and yes. everything else." Yeah. And I was amped about it. So yeah. there's the director and everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Joshua from Lethal Weapon yeah. locked the fucking wardrobe lady in his house in Malibu. Nope. Uh, close to four hours, like that type of shit. Jesus. Gets to set, tell everybody he's sober. It was a, it was an office scene where there was a bar, full mm-hmm. bar behind it. Mm-hmm. And he goes, uh, hey, uh, I'm sober, so just make sure there's no liquor in there or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It was like 120 bottles, no big deal. Right. <laughs> one bottle of Tangeray. No. It, was, it was green, and they were like, hey, we're really sorry. This is the only one that's full, but it's, it's unlike. Like, you it's, can't open it. You'd have to crack it open. Uh-huh. Just this one bottle, everything else. So if you're going to pour a drink or whatever, and we'll put it on like a top shelf for you, right? <laughs> Don't touch the this tank bottle. Right. Yes. All 120 are, are wide open for you yeah, to water, use in this sure. scene, except for one. Oh, great, great. Right. Got it, got it, mm-hmm. got it. You guys, starting off the day. I feel like you already know what's oh, going to happen. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> scene starts. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the thing. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to grab a drink. Turns around, grabs the fucking tangerine. No! Mm-hmm. So no good. glass either. Just handle up. full of Tangare, mm-hmm. half down yeah. his his face, Gullet. and you're yeah. watching and it going like that's take one. Wait, and he goes, <sighs> and he's like, uh, I gotta go, and it was like cut. You know, everybody okay. cut. And it was cut. like stop. Okay, um, runs out to his trailer, uh, is hammered at that point. Of course, took the bottle with him. Yep, um, gone the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. He comes back and tells production that. We made him drink. We were the ones who drove him over the edge. Production shut down for four days, and then they finally were able to pull, you know, three or four scenes. That there's only like three or four scenes in this fucking thing, 
and that was it. So if you guys did that Seagal thing, that would have That's been... That's what it would have been every week. A friend of ours, nightmare okay, for you. So that, a friend of ours worked with Busey years later when he's, you know, even crazier than that. And he finished his shooting and he just kept coming back to set. It was the opposite problem, <laughs> is that he was there. <laughs> and they, they had to pretend, pretend like, like the shoot was, was over. over. No They're way. like, everyone they called rap. Everyone left. Did they Call, fake a rap party? They faked yeah, a rap. rap. They <laughs> all went to their cars. They got him into his car and he drove away and then they got out of their cars uh, and went back, back and, and shot him. You could just start a whole production company of people to put on fake rap parties to get Gary Busey <laughs> to fucking leave. Yeah. The Busey, the Busey <laughs> fake rap. Yeah, but the we've been, we would love to get him because we have something for him. We really want to make him. Jared you know, does. You like, do. No, you want to spend the day with Busey and oh, go I down that fucking every, rabbit hole. It would be, would, it would be it would insane. Be two you would love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The two of you guys. Of course, yeah. We would end up in a fucking Mazda Miata in Malibu. Oh, yeah, you would. the time of like, I see my future in you. I <laughs> exactly. see where I'm heading. <laughs> but we, were, we want to get him because we want to we want to announce that Black Rifle Coffee is entering the space race against Elon Musk. And Busey's mm-hmm. going to be our head engineer. I okay. love it. All right, yeah. Dude, let All him about be the guy. If you can get hire... through one hour of shooting with Busey, I'll, you, I'll give you a thousand If you're going to hire a chief scientist for a coffee company to get to space, I think Busey's the guy, right? I bet Gary yeah. Busey would have out I mean, of Or the we could do twin doctors. I'm in. I would do it. Out of the thousand. How are we not in that? How are we not in that? Hey, yeah. listen, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the one sheet, I'll send it over to you guys. Out of send the it. thousand bad idea and crazy fucking ideas that Busey had, I bet he'd have one that was like amazing. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Like, I, just yeah. Wanted, I just wanted to put him in the yard with a welder and yeah. Ron Jeremy and just let them just go. Make like some happen. Be like Ron maybe, Jeremy, remember he wouldn't leave. Yeah. We spent time with Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Ron yeah. Jer- yeah. Yeah. But we cast him as a joke, as like a parody of, of course. Uh, of course. We did this uh crowd. He's fund- a good guy though. I mean he's he like is- a very sweet individual. Totally great guy. We did a crowdfunding campaign for for Range Fifteen, uh, mm-hmm. this movie that we yeah. we did a, a couple years ago, and we needed somebody ridiculous that was just like, "Hey, pop up!" Right. The audience would get a good chuckle out of it. Right Ron on. Jeremy was in on it too. Yeah, like, yeah. all right, great. great. Yeah, says two lines, leaves, whatever. Come back four or five hours later, still at craft service. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, I believe, it was baked ziti. Yeah, no, like, and they he, were like, he will not he stop eating himself. baked ziti. <laughs> no, he built himself because I was sitting with him, mm-hmm. and he had taken. Like because lunch was already over for like yeah. three hours, he took all the leftovers from every tray and there made you himself go. this soup. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> By the way, he was just, yeah, he was like I would call different. I would call Ron Jeremy semen just the leftovers of everybody's stuff. You uh, know what yeah. I mean? It's just like this. It's, su- it's this Jeremy soup. soup. Jeremy soup is what he injects people with. But he still wants to fuck. By the way, oh, like, he, oh he God, pulled he's me DT- aside and told me he was just DTF. like, he's man, like, I miss it. I miss it so yeah, much, man. He goes, I'm just waiting for that call. Yeah. And he's like, because he, he he thinks it's going to come back around of like, where it's like, all right, great. It's he, Hakeem Olajuwon again. Yeah. Like, Look, you know, I get it. Come on out at, at half he's court. He's kept himself in such good shape, so I get that. <laughs> I, I understand. He's like, a, he's like a fat Salvador Dali. You know? <laughs> Crazy, but he—he, he, I mean, look, he's still alive, which is remarkable. I mean, amazing, wh- incredible. Didn't we do like what do we do like these? We hosted these like internet. What were they? The some awards, streaming awards? Str- no, something at the Improv. Remember, it was like streamed out there, and oh Jer- yeah, Ron Jeremy was there. The Dennis, Twitter awards, the Twitter awards. We hosted this as like years ago, and at uh, maybe like 2013, 2014, at the Improv, at the Improv in, the in, improv in was- L.A., and it was like broadcast out, and he was there. Rodman was there. Fucking the Iron, Iron, oh, man. The Iron Sheik. The Iron Sheik was there. Wow. Now, he, now he, you're you're the, you're the, talking about my dream team. Yeah. Those are some serious diplomats too. Right. Yeah. 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 The Iron Sheik is. Yeah. I mean, Rodman. Rodman going to North Korea. Rodman being like, please let me be a part of the uh, the diplomatic envoy that goes because he like went to. North Korea and like got super drunk. Took a shit, shit in the hallway of his hotel. No in the hallway. Way. Didn't even make it to his room. And I'm like, Randy and I were like, what's in a Dennis Rodman shit? Like, right? Like, Dennis Rodman <laughs> shit would be like Skittles, Skittles, cocaine, cocaine Fruit Loops. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. is, if like you were to like change, change, like a fee, like 38 cents. You like, know, like, <laughs> yeah, the one of them was like, that he got lint. out of there without being imprisoned? Huh. Wow. Yeah, but, but like, he's friends with he's Kim Jong un. He's friends Jong-un. with Kim Jong un. So, like, the, no, but the, you know how you like go hiking on a trail and you like see like shit and you're like, huh, you go through it. You're like, is this a mountain lion nearby? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what you do. And you'd be like, all right, this is where Dennis Rodman is. Dennis gonna, Rodman is close. He's going to die in three years. Yeah, I'm going to be thing. honest, though. That's that's a lot of power. If I could, if you told me yeah. that I could go anywhere in this world and mm-hmm. just take a shit wherever I felt like it, yeah, with, with no consequences. None. 
Guess who's the most powerful man in the world? Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Rodman. Yeah, yeah. D-Rod, exactly. the worm can confirm <laughs> that he is that man. <laughs> who's the craziest guest you guys have ever had? So we... This we had Richard the, Simmons on. We had Richard Simmons right on. Right before he right disappeared. Before he disappeared. No way. So I met him on a... Is he still disappeared? He is, is still disappearing. Yeah. When you say disappeared, he's just disappeared from public life. For being such a public person... And like, he was the kind of guy who the, the TMZ tour buses would pull in front of his house. He would come out and be like, hello, and, like, meet everyone on the <laughs> tour bus. But now he doesn't do that. But so he, you know, there was talk that he was taken captive by his maid and all this. We stuff. told the whole story about how we met him on, on a plane. plane. So we, we were we were down in we were doing the hosting this show for VH1 uh, in New Orleans. It was an all night show. It was international. It was like going all over the O Awards. So we club. hosted all night long from like you know twelve at night until seven in the morning. And we're like in our forties. We're like we you can't do this anymore. And so <laughs> we we get to the airport and thankfully they flew us first class, which we don't normally fly. And we're like oh. Do we get to go into the first class lounge? Great. So we go in the first class lounge. And you would think the first class lounge would be a place where people would be like celebrating. This is how little first class we fly. Like we thought we'd walk in and be like a fucking party. No. Total people opposite. are just like miserable. I'm Sad. like, you're in the first class I'm like, are you lounge? joking? You're here. This free shit. What just stop doing? being a dick. So we're in there. It's very quiet, very sullen. And then door swings open. We don't even hear it. All right. And in comes this like tornado of. And a gay NATO, a like, gay tornado. I was yeah. like, wait, 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 hey, get over here, take a picture of me. I want He's it. super straight, though, right? He's no. <laughs> <laughs> He's, so, a, he's so as he's, straight as Seagal uh, has real hair. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a, so he's just like, hey, look at this guy over here, and this guy over here, and these two people over here, and like it's a tornado. And then his hair is so wispy. It's basically messing with the Wi-Fi in the lounge. Yeah, I was like, hang on a second. I had four bars a second ago. Why am I I'm on 3G. Why am I roaming? I'm roaming. Roaming. I didn't leave the country. It says Rogers for Canada. Anyway, so so we so we uh, we get on the plane and like he is for some reason I don't know why he's doing this, but he's up. He's up on his seat. As he's people, like greeting people as they're like coming. They're he's coming in, in the plane, and he's Simmons. like, "Look at you." Simmons is like, "Look at you." I whip my hair back and forth. forth. I, I whip, whip my, my hair, hair back. back. He's amazing. <laughs> like, and truly, you're sitting there going, "Like, you have so much energy," and he truly brought the plane together. You're like, I understand why you're a star. It's like the first time we, the time we met, first time we met Snoop Dogg was backstage at the Rome show, and we hung with him for a minute, and you're like. I get it. Right. I funny, get magnetic. It. Yeah. Funny, magnetic. Fun. You just want to hang around him. You're like, you have this larger than life aura about Simpson, you. Simmons, Simmons, Simmons had the same, same thing. thing. He's like insane. But this is a crazy flight because in this first class, for some reason, I don't know if people are shooting movies or whatever. So Laura Dern and her mom are in the front row. Okay. And Simmons is <laughs> Diane right. Ladd. Diane Ladd. Yeah. So Simmons is right there in the next row with his manager. We're right behind her. We're sitting next to this like cute black woman whose husband aunt was over there who looked like Wood Harris from The uh, Wire. The Wire. Oh, big fan of his. It wasn't Wood oh, Harris. It no. was, no, even way fucking better. It was the Riz from the Wu-Tang Clan. Come okay. on. So, so we're like, how do you filmmaker. mistake the RZA? So, so Randy and I, at this point, when we saw you were like, okay, like, if this plane goes down, we don't even get mentioned in the article. No way. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It shows you where we're at. Yeah, know? exactly. So, RZA and 128 people right, perish. And right. a couple of Jews who look alike. Those are who... All right, so, so we're on this flight. Simmons is going crazy, and then he passes out. Like he, a kid, like a Furby whose batteries were just taken. Right, out. He, he just, just goes like, out. Yeah, I don't he's know. got his own pillow from his own from his crib where Which he said his child. We're like, that's too much information. Like, I should know that that's this. a pillow you grew up with. Uh, and then he wakes up and like Randy and I, for some reason, I think I were, asked the the Riz's wife if she had ever heard of the Wu Tang name generator. Do you know what that is? Yeah, you yeah, put yeah. your name in and yeah. it gives you your Wu Tang name, and she had never heard of that. So I'm like talking about that. I'm like, what if like the Riza puts his own name in the Wu Tang? Is that like we go back in time or what yeah. happened right there? <laughs> so he's already in there. Uh, ODB comes back to life with a hologram. <laughs> well, like, shit. Oh, hey, we've unlocked him, baby. I got your money. So uh, <laughs> so I like we were sitting apart, right? For some reason, yeah. And Simmons like couldn't. believe he the, wakes up and sees Randy and sees me. He's like, wait, wait a minute. What? what the, are you you? Are you you? Are you you? And he's like, wait, why? how are you not what singing? What is going on? He starts singing like... Uh, <laughs> he's like drafting a Broadway musical that we never want to see. What is going on? And it's like, he's the real life... 
Family Guy version of himself. Yes. Insane. A hundred percent. But even more. <laughs> so later in the flight, I got to take a leak, and he is sitting on the... So Laura Dern's in that front seat where the wall is right in front of you. You're not allowed to put your bags in. He is sitting on the ground at Laura Dern's feet, Stuffed and his legs. White, white shirt, white shirt. Stuffed his legs <laughs> under her chair, like stowed himself under the chair. <laughs> and he's like he's, talking to her. Right. And they're they're and both, both bawling. They're like both she like is, oh, he is openly tears. weeping. Why? Openly Why are they crying? <laughs> maybe they're talking. About, maybe they're talking about Ben Harper doing her wrong. I don't know. But like, <laughs> Dern's so. But Dern's amazing. I'm such a Laura Dern fan. I just love. So anyway, I walk by and Richard Simmons stops me. Stop Stops crying. I mean, stops crying. I watch this from from ten feet. You know, away. he just inter- he had interacted with us earlier. He sure. stops me and he's like, uh, he stops me and points out to me and says, "I want to kiss you on the lips and I want to take you to Italy." And I was, I looked around, I'm like, wait, me? <laughs> you know, and like, I would go. I was uh, like, yeah. Jared would go. So then it was I like, said, are we talking the Amalfi Coast? Because yeah, I would do that. that's, I could that's go to nice. Positano. I could go to Ravello. Anyway, and. Uh, and I was like, ah, Richard, I mean, I'm married. I can't kiss you on the lips or whatever. He takes my hand and starts pulling me down towards him. And then he just starts. Well, you also like look to Dern. At I'm that like, moment. Dern, Dern. What are we doing, Dern? Yeah, Dern, yeah, yeah. Dern. Which was weird because we also, before the, we specifically requested a non Dern flight. And, and there we got she a was. Dern flight. Right. Anyway, so it's no, like no, a kosher meal. You got to answer. Not even Bruce. Treat her like a football Brewster. player. Dern, Dern, it's, Dern. It's Dern. What are we doing? Dern. <laughs> so he then takes my hand, takes my thumb, and puts my thumb and starts sucking my thumb. On like a plane. goat at a petting zoo. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? And I gently removed it, and I said, Richard, you were a wonderful person, but you can't suck my thumb. And I went to the bathroom. And he, did you ever think at any point in your adult life you'd have to utter that phrase to anyone? <laughs> You're a wonderful person, but you can't, can't suck, suck my, my thumb, thumb well, on a first, in that, well, first class. In that moment, I kind of had it. You know how like people talk about mountaineering, like they're climbing Everest, and they have a moment where they go outside themselves yeah. and go above themselves. DMT, and the, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of had that moment. And I was like hovering above the situation. I'm like, if I would have just picked a random woman out in this plane and started sucking her thumb, like the air marshals would come and fucking tase my ass. You would have like, been raped. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How could you thrown down, down to the ground? Throw fire on this issue. Because I'm trying to think. Like if you were to just start singing to him, what song? <laughs> what, what song is going would you on? sing? Oh, yeah, <laughs> just, I'm singing his song back to me. It was just crazy. But we got to know him, and you know, uh, what was what was Laura Dern's reaction while he's sucking your could, song? She could not believe, believe it. it. She was like stunned, and she's like, "I wish I could help you, but I." And can't. and years later, I met the woman who like runs her production company, and she told me. The Dern side of it. So, like, she told me because <laughs> heard that she, side. Yeah, of the story. and yeah. she was saying how crazy that was, and how she, like, Dern was like, these guys, they're com-. She was telling her friend, texting, like, they're comedians, and she, it was great that, like, there was another side to this whole story. Anyway, so we had Simmons on our. He, we were like, you got to come to our podcast. You have to. And this is right at the time he was. He, he was still out in public and like hanging out. He came and did our podcast, and for an hour, it was. The craziest hour of he's laughing and singing and happy, and then he's he starts doing crying. like like Black Key song. Like he'll just be talking to you and be like gold on the ceiling. And like then, really, and, and then, then start calm. and then, then he start crying about letters that he received at, when he was on General Hospital in 1984 from people who like I can't get out of my own way with my weight, and like he feels it a lot. I mean, the feels- true thing that I loved about him, and this is what I'll say that why he's amazing and why, and again, I put this in the same Snoop Dogg category. I'll even put. Put it in the category of why this podcast is successful, right? right? Sure. What you guys are doing because you, you guys, this is a, for anybody who's starting anything out there. Do what you love and do what you know, and don't think about the end result of what it's going to be. If you think about what I want it to be and where I want to go, you're going to fuck it up. So, like Richard Simmons started his story is that he started in L.A. I think he was like a mater d at at, at uh, Amici's. Amici's, or really? like so he's a mater d at this Italian restaurant where all these people came in, and he's the perfect person to be a mater d because oh, yeah. he's no funny shit. and he's like energy. Hello, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> so he's hilarious, right? Right? And he's gregarious, scene. and people would probably come to the restaurant just to see this guy and have him kind of sing to them and talk to him. So then he's like, I he he'd always been kind of a fat kid, and he say he got teased by that, and so he was exercising to keep the weight off because that was always his demon that he was fighting with. He's like, I'm gonna open an exercise studio. I just love it. I want other people like me to 
So he bought, he rented or bought this or rented. I think he took the money he had made as a mater d, and he rented this little hole in a wall space in Beverly Hills. And he started, and people started coming. He just from the restaurant they got him. He's like, yeah, he's like, I have an exercise place. Come to my. So thing. they started coming, and he was amazing. You take his exercise class, and you hear about people today going, I took this spin class, and I love this teacher. I took this yoga class. This teacher is really great. People were saying this guy's so funny, and he's gregarious, and he just has a great time. More people started coming, more people started coming. Then it became like really popular and he was booking up and he stopped being a mater d'. And then like someone was like, my friend brought her friend who was a producer at General Hospital to the exercise class. Person comes and is like, this fucking guy. We got. We have to figure out something to get him on the show. Like he would he's be so, amazing. He's so. He's got magnificent energy. Yeah. We got to get him on the show. But they, that wasn't Richard's goal. Goal. He wasn't like I want to open an exercise studio so I can get discovered. He was just like I'm gonna do the thing that I love that that makes me happy that I'm good at that I'm great at, and that's it. That's the end of his story. It was like I'm not gonna do this to get this. And then, of course, this other thing happens. He gets on General Hospital, and like people love him. He's crazy, and then all these other things happen for and him. And then but he's able to get his stuff out in the video realm to everybody. But I feel like anything crazy. he would have chosen to do, he probably would have been successful. I love just it. because I of love energy. just being able to remember the commercials for his tapes. Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the t- the t- I mean, meal stuff. I'm pretty is... sure I was watching Short Circuit on NBC. <laughs> yes, yeah. you there were. Was a Catalina dressing commercial <laughs> after it. Yeah. I, I, grew, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and yeah. my mom, as a kid, was was super into like in the '80s. Richard Simmons was yeah. was moms God. Were. So he traveled. He traveled around the yes, country. He came and he, to a mall in, in correct, but he, he would teach a class. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? You need to enter a contest to win a ticket to actually work out in a class with him. Yep. My mom got that no ticket. Way. Yes. And he but probably came up. To my parents like, had to work and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So like I had to go to the like the kids nursery side of it. So I got to see it through the glass. My mom Amazing. working out with him. That's the closest I think she's been to Jesus right. in her entire Into life. Into happiness. Where it was just, Pure yes, exactly. Pure bliss. Pure bliss of Richard Simmons. And I, as a kid, I'm just looking through the glass and he's, I know, you know, he's, just moving. And he people, was, because he's not that in shape so either. No, he's either. Not. And also, I looked him up when we were on the flight with him and I'm like, so, so How this old is the is craziest th- story, all right? Because, like, I don't really believe in that this is a crazy story. So, just a little precursor. So we're, again, really out of it because we've worked all night. You know how it is with sleep deprivation. Yep. It's, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's not good. This so is June, 20, June 28th, 2010. I know it's 2010 okay. because it was one year. How do you remember right. the date? Because <laughs> June 28th is our dad's birthday, and he had passed away the mm. year before. And so the, he would have been – actually, it was June 2012. Yeah. So he, he would have been, been 70, 70 on that day. Gotcha. Like he died at 67. He would have been 70 on that day. That's the only reason why we remember all this stuff. A, it was the summer, it was New Orleans, and we were just like drenched in sweat all night. Even though it was all night, it was one of those New Orleans nights where you're just like, Yeah, the humidity, it's 105. So, it's 100 degrees in yeah. at like it's 2 like in the morning. It's fucking, fucking nuts. Yeah, I mean, New Orleans is my favorite game to play in New Orleans, is, uh, is, uh, Injured or, or drunk. drunk? Yeah, like you try and get <laughs> kind of like Gary German. Yeah. is that kind of like Gary German? Gary German. Yeah. Injured or drunk? Injured or drunk in New Orleans in the French Quarter is like, is he was he stabbed or is he just drunk? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the good thing about that is you can play it twenty four hours a day, <laughs> all day, yeah, 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 yeah. All, all day long. Day. It doesn't end. That all game never ends. Eat a po' boy and enjoy it. And so I love it so much. So uh, so you know that's what it was. So we were like you know thinking about our dad, and it was an emotional. You know we're in a different headspace than you would on any normal day. So that's we're going through, and it's all night so we look him up to be like i want to know how old he is because i'm like is does he either either he looks great for his age like in my mind i'm like what is he 80 and he looks like he's 65 or yeah like an asian right to me he's like an asian right either 14 or 33 whoa (laughs) your skin is amazing so i was like is he 80 or is he 70 i don't know he was 64 so he looked Bad to okay for his age. <laughs> for someone who worked out all the time. I'm like, you should look better for your that age. That was shocking, but we're looking on the Wikipedia, and his name is his actual name. This is crazy. His actual name is Milton. Milton, right? Milton yeah. Simmons. Milton his, Simmons. is his real name. Our father's name, Richard Milton Sklar. So wow. we were like, for the if you're someone who believes in that, and you're right. like, 
our dad basically just gifted in, us this gifted experience. us this experience and this, <laughs> on his birthday and this thirteen really minute story that we did phone. on our Netflix special. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Dad, for like handing us this Richard Simmons. And then he came on our podcast, and that was the last long interview we he ever did. How do we know? Because there was this amazing podcast that our buddy Dan Taberski did put out called Missing Richard Simmons, which was huge. Which was like, where did he go, and why is yeah. he not in the? And they talked to us because they're like, you had the last big interview with him ever. Well, so what was your conclusion of what you thought happened to him based on My the drugs and yeah. everything else that's going on in his life? Well, so this is what we think very much. I think he built an empire back then where he had to, you know, he kind of comes from old Hollywood where he couldn't be out. He's a gay man. He also, like his man. audience was your mom and right. your mom everywhere across the country, which so like he didn't, he built up this audience of a lot of Midwest and Southern moms who Christian, Christian like, yeah. Yeah. of faith, people who would be conflicted about how they felt about him if they knew that he was li living a gay lifestyle. But if he so, was like, I don't know, 15 years younger. He would have come into that in his forties or fifties, where nobody gave a shit. Right, yeah. exactly. And yeah. So kind of sad. He still kind of had that. So he, so here's this guy who lives his life outside. He lives it out in the world. Like he's just everywhere. He's the, you know, the master of ceremonies of a parade, and then he's on the Today Show, and then he's over here, and he can never be, be like himself. holding hands with his boyfriend or anything like that. And you say to yourself, "That's got to wear on a guy. That's just yeah, on miserable. a person who can't live the life that they who they really are." At some point, I think he just got tired. And he just was like, I can't do this anymore. My whole, maybe even got to the point where it's like, my whole life I've been this one thing and I'm tired. He's got all the money he needs. He doesn't need another cent in his life. For sure. Still making money off of his exercise things. He doesn't need it. So it's like he's not driving towards something. And he probably was just like, I'm, I'm so tired. I can't do this anymore. And I would like to be the person who I am. Or psychologically, it just hit him so much that he hit a wall and was like, I can't, I can't be out in public anymore. The maid thing was weird to me. The maid, the maid thing. So I weird. can't. That she's the one that I can't figure out because your story makes complete sense. And that I, I would 100 percent be like, that's probably the case. And all he had but to then say the maid was, comes out right. the, the chain link fence creeping yeah, I know. around. I know. And I'm like. So mm. I wonder if he's still at this point where he can't admit he doesn't want to hurt these hurt these people or make these people feel conflicted feelings about him that I think maybe his whole camp concocted this crazy story. And the other thing is like he, he's sexuality. really good at playing the victim. So like in our interview with him, he started talking about how hurtful it was that David Letterman would make fun of because all his appearances on Letterman well, he, hilarious. Were hilarious. Yeah. The yeah. thing with Conan too, where Conan yeah. had the yeah. dog hump the fucking little Richard Simmons thing. I he, mean he just and it hurts him. It, it hurts him. him. So but he plays the victim really well. So he jumps into that. He kind of sees himself as this damsel in distress. Like oh, you know like he he's like the girl the woman from Gone with the Wind, you know, like, yeah. oh, Red, that's who he thinks he is. And so he plays that role so well. So even just the idea of if this woman isn't like mind controlling him, if she just says to him, you can't go out, you've got to, do, he's like, she's holding me against my will. I yeah. Oh, is it she's weird that that's me. how I want him to be, though? That no. is, though. Like, that's cool. Like, if I came over, I would, I would expect him to be at the top like of a yeah. weird, some long staircase. Long staircase. Like a Gray Gardens type thing. Like, can you grab the tea? I know. Yeah, grab does. me the tea. Jeez. I'm up here. All yeah. I knew was, but I, you, you got to, and same thing, like, game's got to recognize game. Like, you have to yeah. be like, this dude, again, that whole, anytime I see somebody make it by just doing what they love and just make it to a larger platform, I'm like, it's the Simmons effect. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you did what you loved, and then it got bigger. You said your mom was a huge fan of his, right? Yes. What about your guy's mom? So Were they into it, too? She wasn't. She wasn't as taken did, by But, it. like, did some ex, she, like, played you know, mm -hmm. tennis with friends and stuff like that. She was less into the. My mom had his aerobics. tape and Cindy Crawford's tape. So here's yeah. what I want to know, yeah. Crawford. Did anybody Crawford. not Still know he was gay at any point? So <laughs> it's like Paul Lind. I mean, people. Paul Lind. Was, hello. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my wife? <laughs> and you're like, I don't think I'm so. I'm in the gay square. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but he was am and hilarious and amazing and was in the gay Hollywood square. And but drank himself to death because he couldn't be who he was. And he, yeah. I, you will go back and watch. He had like pilots or shows that were he, where, where he, he played, played the father. The husband. Bye bye, Birdie. He was the father. Yeah, and you're like, like come what, on. What was the amount of cognitive dissonance involved in not knowing that Jim Neighbors was gay? Yeah, that, yeah. Liber that Liberace was gay. Come on, man. I mean, I, I think people back had to know. But I think back then you almost didn't want to believe it, or you thought maybe it could be corrected. So what at some if 
points. So what if? And I don't know. I mean, but Rob what? Halford. I mean, you want to start talk about you yeah. know Iron Maiden, like like not Iron Maiden. I'm sorry, not Iron Maiden. <laughs> Judas Priest. I'm Judas Priest. I mean, Judas Priest. But no, like, but but uh, yeah. okay. So let's say let's put it into a regular context today. So let's say, I mean, again, I don't know. I've heard rumors, but I don't know nothing's Travolta. confirmed. Or or more or like Tom Cruise, because Tom Cruise is still playing Jack Reacher. He's still yeah. playing that if Tom Cruise came out as gay, which he would never do because he's a Scientologist and they don't believe in that, but if he came out as gay, would a large group of people go and be like, I believe you're the leading man who's kissing this woman and I believe it? Nope. No, he's I, I think it's, it's the, Rup- the Rupert Murdoch effects where it's just like, or not uh, Murdoch, uh, Everett Rupert. I'm yeah, sorry. Rupert, Rupert Murdoch's Rupert the Everett, Rupert head of Everett, president Rupert of Fox. Everett, yeah. Either way. I don't know. Though, that, but too. he, that, that guy's career was over. And I mean, yeah. after, what was it? Three weddings and a funeral? Or Four weddings and a funeral. I love yeah. that he's bastard. You took one wedding out. You took one wedding out. Jesus Christ. I wanted to be one wedding. I wanted to be 10 minutes. Who's the guy that was in that show White Collar? Super gay. Yeah. Oh, Matt Bomer. Matt Bomer. Super gay. And he could have, he was close to being Superman. Yeah. But I heard. That they had said, "Hey, I don't know if we can cast a gay Superman." That was that was the rumor for. Well, what a about Brokeback Mountain? Did you not believe those guys were gay? Because that was pretty graphic. I didn't believe it until he spit in his hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything else I was cool with, but when he spit Bro, in his hand, man, that's when I was like, "That's an expert." I mean, and that's a pro move. That's he a knows, pro move. Yes. A beautiful move. Because yeah. I didn't think that, that was enough lube to go in. I can't quit. Do, do you think yeah. they yeah. had a, yeah. a gay sex technical advisor on that? Uh, you know, like you would need one. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm about to plow this dude. What do I do next? Maybe. I, all I know is it was like one of the more beautiful love stories I've ever seen. Same. Yes. Ever. Because better of than the, Twilight, for sure. Yes. The, better Bad, than a way lot of better movies. than Twilight. Because of the moment when... The moment when he looks at the, at the, at the flannel shirt in the closet. That's amazing. Yeah. The, mo- yeah. the moment where he's talking to... like, like This to me is good thing. writing. The moment where he's talking to the wife. Sorry. And he's Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway, and he didn't realize what. And he's just saying, he just says to her half of the story, which is, we used to go up and go fishing and whatever, and we used to just hang out, kind of throwing it away, like we just hung out. Like he was like saying, I'm not revealing anything to her. Meanwhile, she's on the other line going, he said that was the happiest he's ever been in his entire life. So he indicts the relationship just by revealing that they used to do it all the time, and then she right. knows exactly what it is. I'm like, that's fucking good writing. Yeah, that's just that's just brilliant. It's great. There was there's one actor in there, Randy Quaid, and I think yes. if you would have switched the Heath Ledger with Randy Quaid role, yeah, amazing. Well, they it could might still be have. On, they both. Be on the run. <laughs> We've said this before. We've said that McConaughey. All right. If McConaughey in all of his romantic comedies wow. was was <laughs> Dallas the Buyers Club thin, yes. like, like Dallas, uh, like a buck forty, right? Brad Pitt Fight Club thin. Brad, Brad Pitt Fight Club was still like one sixty five ripped. I don't I'm know. Talking, I see he's one forty in that. I no think. way. Yeah, he's a tiny man. He's, he's a, dainty. Dallas God. Buyers Club, like McConaughey, then McConaughey is like one twenty one thirty five. One thirty five. Yeah, yeah. Imagine so, if he was that in Failure to Launch. Okay. Imagine <laughs> if he was that in the wedding planner. He's, he's, he's having a failure to Same launch off the couch. Just, <laughs> just sallow, different. sunken cheeks. Dude, the, the, I am fast. <laughs> I am fast. All right, all right, all right. I can't get off this couch. Yeah. Uh, I I love my favorite are the new Lincoln Matthew McConaughey commercials where he's at that party. He's yeah. At, so he's at the party and he's like, of course, sitting at the corner and like talk, regaling the table of all the story, like this whole story. And then she turns to me and it's like, oh, tell another story. Then he's in the pool hall, in the room with the pool table. And he's looking at the pool table and there's like. Three party guests. This is in the commercial. I'm like, in the commercial, three party guests who are like in the hallway, afraid to go into the room with Matthew McConaughey. Just like, is he in there? Is he in there? And then he goes in and he does some weird shot where it looks like he fucking rips. Trick shot. Yeah, but it looks like he rips the felt of the table. Like yeah. he wouldn't give a shit about that. He ri- And it goes around the corner. And you see the car driving around the corner. Then he gets into his Lincoln. I mean, talks to no one after that. Just does it on his own. No one wants to play pool with him. Gets into his Lincoln, looks at it down and is like, yeah, I killed that party. <laughs> the yeah. way. Like, why, why couldn't he say it at the end? It, it had to be a voiceover. So right. it was like, yeah, I, yeah just, I, I just walked away and they knew, yeah, what, they knew what I did. They That's knew right. what and I did. And you're like, what, yeah. what, what the fuck? No, no. Yeah. No one say knows it. what you did in there, man. That's a weird that was a trick shot. That yeah. was a trick shot. And there's three people just, just creepily creeping over the, like peering but out. Like in the commercial, like can't you create a universe where there's a bunch of people hanging out with him while he's playing? <laughs> yeah. Like even in the fake world of this dumb commercial, they had to have people be like, we can't talk Keep to him. Keep him at a distance. No. We can't talk to Keep him. him. That girl, she had the fear in her eyes of Anne Frank looking at Just kind of peeking out. And it was like, man. This is going to be a great diary entry. I'll be back in an hour. 
I've, I've never met McConaughey, but I feel like if some random person on the street just walked up to him, he would have a 30 minute conversation with he him. He strikes me as a guy that, that would. The greatest. Talk, that I've, would talk I've, I've met him yeah. numerous times. He the greatest guy awesome. on like, the planet. If you watch him, all the, of us combined. He, he goes to all the UT games. Yeah, he's a big Texas games. Longhorn fan. Yeah. So he's just walking up and down the sidelines, yeah. chatting people up the oh, whole game. Oh, when he talked to the football team, it was great. I mean, our friend, our friend does the best McConaughey impression ever, ever, ever. Does on our podcast. Does on our podcast. Who's this guy? Chris Cox. He's a great, like, voice guy, the family guy. And, and oh. American Dad, like really good, but does a lot of character voices on our thing. Like put it this way, he can do McConaughey, Jerry Jones, and then Rodman and Tiger Woods. Like he can do a ra- like an incredible range of voices. But with McConaughey, we had him one time do Weak McConaughey, like the Dallas Buyers Club. Like he's <laughs> <laughs> just uh, like a whisper. And then he like and then uh, Fat, fat McConaughey when he gained couch. all that extra weight, so he's a little bit fatter. So yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. he's doing his voice in the three stages of McConaughey. <laughs> McConaughey's always he's only got that three voice range because yeah, he never yeah. takes southern out of it no. so no matter what the character is it's going to be yeah, southern I'm from, New York, like, City, I'm, baby. I'm, I'm from i'm from new york city yeah, baby. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is what we do here yeah, in the yeah. big city you're looking right here i grew the, up in the streets the, the bronx, <laughs> <laughs> the bronx, man. From the bronx. <laughs> all my family's italian the, you see that deli over there i made love in that deli uh, you know like it's like dude you're born and raised in new york city but you're still southern real authentic bodega yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, but he's the cool Lincoln, Lincoln lawyer. Exactly. Lincoln Three Lincoln fingers liar. of tequila. Cool cool glass. Glass. Snow cubes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. Yeah. You are good. I, you I are did a McConaughey good. for we, many, many years. Once for this a is over, guy. we have to introduce them to our secret, our secret app. I was just thinking the yeah, same fucking thing, dude. Yeah, they need it. They need it. Especially for your buddy. If, sure. he, does, if he does good impressions, we he's can basically make... Any face say oh animated we yeah oh. we have this animated app that does right. it for you we're not gonna but it's not it even is, animated it's well, like you could take an actual fucking four K face picture of it, it, it looks no like way. a three D image now yeah, it's amazing um, but but with that app you can tell what the future is where they're gonna start making oh, yeah. presidents say shit oh, like yeah. I, you can see where it's headed oh, and they've been they've been working on it for years sure. Of course so they have. Uh, yeah, of course. it's one yeah. of those things where yeah. that that's coming down the, the coming. train. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of fucked up shit is coming down the train. Just just can't enjoy yourselves now. Drink black black rifle coffee. And exactly, have and, and and live your life. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. tourney time, kids. Mm-hmm. Tourney time. Stop yeah, we it. just did our brackets live on air yesterday. Got yep. it. Uh, who, who How you, far do you? Let me ask you this: How far do you have Murray State going? <laughs> uh, he, he's got. Uh, Bel- Belmont. Belmont. I got Belmont in the Sweet the 16. Sweet 16. So I have Houston going to the Final Four. They can score points. Yes. yes. I don't we, know about we Final We have Houston four. in the Grade 8. I think I they're the Elite eight. eight. Houston yeah. Yeah. Final Four. Call it the Grade 8. Three weddings and a funeral. <laughs> the Grade eight. eight. I'm on fire. fire. All over. I'm, on, I'm on fire, <laughs> man. Grateful 13. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Ocean 7. Jake Busey was awesome. Uh, no, but, um, <laughs> Mike McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think I have in my bracket, I got Houston. Houston, I have Houston, Tennessee, Duke, and Michigan. Of course, we have to like you know, but and I have I actually have Duke beating Michigan, and I have Duke, Tennessee, and I got Tennessee winning because I just think they have the bodies to go against them and, okay. and disrupt them. They do. Anytime Duke has lost this year, it's because they've been kind of pushed around a little bit, and so that that's what I, I got think. Gonzaga losing in the first round. Wow. I watched Gonzaga play. And Two, I know wait, but it's a 16 seed. Yes. yes. Which happened last year when it, UVA it lost. It did. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It was, it was the first UCLA. time yeah, in yeah. history that that happened. So I know Gonzaga. People are going to be like, this is a great team. I watched Gonzaga play St. Mary's. St. Mary's in the finals of their conference. Yeah. Same. And, and they look terrible. So I, I was we, like. I got them out in the second. Okay. Like second round. So the second round, they could play Syracuse. That's why I, I said. Syracuse it's, beating them, yeah. It's okay for me to drop them out in the first round. I'm going to pull that. Because you, you got to have some big upsets. You got, you yes. got to pick upsets. If you want to win, win, you're never going to win your bracket if you yeah. pick it the way. It's correct. never ever gone exactly the way. No, it never will. It. But the biggest no. upsets are always five twelves. In five twelve, thirteen four. It's like seventy five percent of five twelves have gone to the twelve. Do you know why that is? Fourteen. The, because because a five seed is usually a big uh, conference team that's gone middle of their conference. Yeah. Okay, and a twelve is usually a small conference team Lots that's one. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mean, lot of leadership. So they so and a a lot of like outside scoring. I mean, That's the tournament because the truth of the matter about the tur- why the tournament's so great and why I still think it is probably the best like event in all of sports is that. Like I'm, you know, you you, you don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. No. We're sitting here going like, there is no way we can predict who's going to be in the final four, and there's no way because we- anyone can have a bad game. Look, yeah, what ha- what happens if something what happened to Zion happens to him in another game? Now Duke's a very different team. Yeah, they're t- t- or he, he get- sits out. 
Or he like, gets like, in, let's, let's face it. Even if he tweaks it, just yeah. tweaks something. Forget about or it. Gets forget in, it. Or gets in a foul trouble. Yeah. You know, he gets like three whistles. Are they going to really leave him in the whole time? Like they're going to auto bench him and then you're going to have an issue. So to me, I think anything can happen. No team in the entire field is undefeated. So you will lose games. You just will lose games. You'll yeah. come up against a better team who's better than you on that night. That's why it's Or so a hard. weird scheme. Just, Syracuse has the most bizarre zone that no one can figure out. In Everyone's one game. Yeah. six eight with like huge ar- long arms and you just can't get over it. It's like a So crazy you better be shooting well that day. If you're or, or Wisconsin, well. where the you know the over unders one seventeen in that game, where you're like Jesus Christ, am, am I really watching a fifty six fifty eight? You game? are, because and, and Wisconsin grinds you out, and a guy like Ethan Happ could go off for thirty points. Yeah, he get yeah. thirty po- thirty that of guy's their a 50. junior. He's been around forever, and he's never going to be an NBA player. But he's a great. He's, he's a like senior. Kamin- he's senior. A senior. He's yeah. like Kaminsky. Kaminsky was a guy who on Wisconsin was great yeah. in the college game. Not going to do anything in the pros. Yeah. He'll be okay. I but mean, like, look, but he's got a lot. He's crafty. He's got a lot of moves around the around the rim, and he can get whatever big guy you have in foul trouble. Yeah. So like, you better throw on a scrub for like five minutes just to foul the shit out of him because otherwise he's not a good foul shooter. Not no. a good foul shooter. But I'm just saying, like, that's right. Wisconsin can dirty the game up. Michigan State. Who, who was your final four? So my final four uh, is. I think it's similar to yours. I think uh, I, I had to pick Michigan. I think I had. I think Michigan. I think I have Michigan State upsetting Duke, mm-hmm. um, just because I watch Michigan State and Cassius Winston is like the arguably best. the best point guard. I love that he's getting cut. no talk about he's, no NBA talk, none whatsoever. None, but yeah. you're like because he's that's, slow, and I'm like uh, he also just scores when you need him to score. Right. Like they just what they do is they set up a screen. It's pick and roll time. They pick out your guy, and he can take your center to the rack. He did it against Michigan. I watched him do it. I watched three games this season where Michigan, a great team, got beat. By Michigan State because over of Cassius over Winston. Over. Winston, Winston, Winston. Because of him, I think Michigan big, State. Big 10 player of the year. I think I got Michigan State playing Tennessee in the finals, and I think I got uh, Tennessee winning. I went hard with uh, Carolina Duke finals. Yeah. I've wanted, I've wanted, I've wanted to see it forever. Yeah, I want to cool see it. I've wanted on, to see it national championship. It's cool that they're on opposite sides of the. And they went two and they uh, Duke Carolina beat them twice and then Duke won the last one. Correct. So, and it was close. It was on a buzzer we, beater. Well, and it was it a weird play. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. a weird play. We both had uh, Florida State going to the Final Four too, right? Yeah, we have fi- Florida State. We have all. F- we have four ACC yeah. teams in wow. the Final Four. Duke, because Duke's bracket is easy. Yes. Yeah, I mean they, they have the easiest bracket by far. Although Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State, State, I State might give that, a problem. Well, that's a tough game, Michigan State. It Duke. is, that's but that, that's going to be that's the only game going yeah. into the Final Four, yeah, and they have right. no other tests. That's yes. right. Uh, UVA. Yes. Yeah. Look, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they won it all. To be honest, yeah, they're so good. And then we, I've got Carolina. And Florida, Florida State. State. Yeah. Would Florida be the, State's won 15 to 16. Those guys have been on they, they fire. On and fire they're right all now. athletes. Although Michigan played them in the I, – I, I question when the chips are down. Is the coaching there? I mean, I yeah. like that guy as a coach, but I'm like – he did something at the end of the game last year where he just kind of gave up. He just yeah. didn't call a timeout. There was yeah. a seven timeout. I'm like, follow whoa, the guy. whoa, whoa, follow the guy. Do the, it, it they have a lot of athletes. I don't know if they have the scheme. They don't, have, and they don't have the shooters. They're great on yeah. defense, and they and can take just, you. T- and take, they just hit the boards, and they if you don't block, box them out, like their three guard, two guard is a guy who's like six seven and can and literally just jam it. But they have like center. a seven four dude, like yeah. a seven. Yeah. I wanted to see Bull Bull just roll out yeah. throughout the year, but is he, he got, back he got, or no? No, he's not. Back. He's done. He and said, "I'm he, going to the NBA." Right. I'm, he's like, I'm all uh, "Who done cares?" With but I mean, Oregon. Oregon made it in even without him. They yeah. made it in the tournament, which is kind of amazing too. So. 100. percent So, with all this, the cool sports shit you guys have done, yeah. what's the best event you've ever gone to, sporting wise? Wow, that is a great question. I mean, we sat on the field for the home run derby, which is pretty cool. We've mm-hmm. been what to, year? That who, was who was the guy? Houston that year? Astros. Miguel Tejada won. It was probably 2006. He was juiced up, probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Was. That was right before all the that testing was, started. That was to pretty kick sweet. In. So that was those home run derbies are great. I, By the way, in Houston, pro too. steroid right here. Pro steroid. Yeah. I want to see the best possible product. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't. I want to see Synthetic. NASCAR without restrictor plates. I want to yes. see guys going seven thousand miles per hour. Yes. Right? Yeah. Destruction. Same with military. Yeah, Jared, military. you always said, "Hey, let's juice these fucking guys up yeah, and dude. turn them into Why killing not? machines." See what and happens. And then find out what happens. And then like, find we, out what we're happens. at a we're at a place in uh, in t- science and technology now where we can make the best possible athlete in a safe way. Yeah, without risking people's lives and shit. Put That's that true. Stuff on display, I, I, but I do think you've got to like somehow we've got to go through like this this is what i say this is what we say on our thing that's fine and on, and, on view from the cheap seats and, and by the way we've spoken to rob nyer we've spoken to jonah carey these yeah. are guys who study the stats of baseball and whatnot we're like if you can come up with a stat 
called War, where you talk about wins above replacement, which is a speculative stat. It's Basically, a predictor. It's a predictor. It's saying if this guy were replaced, how many how many less wins would you have? Yeah. Right. How many which more? is which you can't possibly know. There's <laughs> no way to possibly know it because you're on a team. You're only one guy on a team. But they bring it up on every they bring it up every, every single game. So I mean, Mike Trout had the best war fucking Bill James, ever, bro. and look what it got him. You yeah, know, I mean, four hundred thirty million dollars in yeah. twelve years. <laughs> but the whole to stay like That's basically in the witness protection program. Oh my god, we yeah. were ranting about. But that I, but day. I love it because I'm like you're because as guys from St. Louis who grew up in St. Louis, when Pujols went to the Angels, we're like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing for an extra forty million dollars? Which in Southern California, we live here, won't go nearly as far as in St. It's Louis. It's a one bedroom. You could have been right. You could have been. You could have been a hero in St. Louis. They would have had a statue in front of the stadium. You could have yeah. owned the team. Could have stayed there with Yadier Molina. And, and by the way, mean. you had just won a World Series. Yeah. And they still have. How much Wayne. more do you need? Yeah. They what still, are you going to try and win needed forty million dollars. I guess. They still had Wainwright and all those guys. They had all those guys. So who knows what he could have done there? But so I do like that he stayed with the loyal to his team all the way through. I think that doesn't exist anymore, and I think that's great. And actually, Angels paid more for Trout than for Salmon. They did. Think about that. <laughs> think about that. But Jared, Jared will tell you about a cod crisis going on. So if you really crisis? want to get into all right, that, all right, Jesus. Yeah. But I think there. But back to the point about war is that I think we should create a a steroid adjusted stat thing. Yeah. So if all the guy like Brady Anderson hit fifty home runs and when he was so that steroid off hitter for the yeah. Baltimore. So, so let's let's make that thirty eight. Let's make that thirty eight. Still home runs. a great year. Great thirty eight yeah. home runs. If you hit thirty eight home runs this we year, we take we take. 78% or 69% so of So there's a hit. way to kind of look at all the players who were kind of had similar stats for them like leading up to this yeah. season and say we put him in this category if he were to have a breakout home run season. You mean for the it? record books? Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. totally fine with baseball, that. Baseball, the reason why steroids is a big issue in baseball more than anywhere the else purest, is, the, is yeah. the people who are like how are we going to contextualize these stats? And then you say yeah, 714. Is that really? Because then you can go back and say is that really a stat? Because what they about weren't a great and Josh Gibson. Yeah, like how yeah. about there with the Negro Leagues were in, you he know, hit, he, what, 930? He didn't hit off yeah. one black yeah. pitcher. So you tell me, like, yeah, yeah. If Babe Ruth who, would have to face Satchel, Satchel Page 12 uh, Yeah, good luck. I think Daniel Tosh does a bit on that where he's like, you're telling me that Barry Bonds is a pariah for taking steroids, but Babe Ruth did all his shit before black people were allowed to play That's baseball. Exactly right. Get the fuck out of so here. To me, what it, <laughs> what, it tells you, what it tells you is that the guy who really is unbelievable is Hank Aaron. Yeah. Because that guy played he in an integrated both, yeah. league. Yep. He, he was not juiced up. You could tell Hank Aaron, he played yeah, like he a, a small guy. You guys have the same frame. Yeah, I've got um, a Hank Aaron frame. You've got frame. a Hank Aaron frame. I got I don't a Hank know, Aaron yeah, frame. Yeah. yeah. And I go cross handed on the thing. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah. He I mean, did do that. When he yeah, was, and Hank Aaron uh, also had to like when he hit the the record breaking home run. When two white dudes ran on the field, start running with him. If I was Hank Aaron, I'd be like, "This I'm is dead. where I die. I'm, dead. I'm out. Yeah. This is where I'm. This is how I go this out. This is down in Georgia. We don't know what's oh. going to happen. I mean, at this point, we don't know. Yeah. Turns out, I thought it was going to be a Monica Seles sitch where it was Ooh. just like that. It's still, when I see that video, I'm uncomfortable. I am it's, so like, uncomfortable. Oh. We're both big Braves fans, by the way. Yeah, I, diehard. Yeah. I, by the way, so here's are what you about. Are you guys Twins fans? No, we're Cardinals fans. You're from St. Louis. Cardinals fans. I mean, I mean. Like the twins beat us in '87, so I yeah, don't have a lot of love for the twins. But like, 91. yeah, they beat us in '91. But that, they had the, like those Kirby great Puckett. couple of yeah. teams. Yeah, Kirby, Kirby Puckett, Puckett, Kent Herbeck. Uh, but the Braves, I actually think this is why I think the Bryce Harper. So talking about Trout in the context of Harper. So Harper to me went from the pressure of being in Washington and not bringing anything to now the pressure of being in Philly and the fans. Well, Philly fans are pretty Brutal. forgiving. Brutal. Pretty calm. Just, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't Holy think it may, their, their team still isn't that great on so, paper. So I think the Braves can still beat him. Oh, they no. They same. Definitely. And they've, they've been pitching against him for years in yeah. the same division. Better and you young know, his you career, know what Bryce His Harper's career average do. against the Braves is like 260. I'd, so rather, yeah, we'll ha I'd rather have the Braves total organization and that whole team than one guy. So the Braves, yeah. you guys went out into the wilderness for a while and kind of weren't doing anything but and then were, Acuna Jr. That's what I'm saying you guys but you start yeah. stockpiling and and from within like that's a yeah. guy they've that you sort of brought in but that's what Bobby first. Cox did when he came over from Toronto back in great. the late 80s man yeah, yeah. you were yeah. never like we're gonna I mean Sid from Breen you first. brought over but like yeah you took you took raw talent this which is what I always love to see which by the way when you look at the Yankees because we lived in New York when the Yankees won four World Series and we were there to see that team get assembled and that's a homegrown team yeah like that's so anti 
anti Yankees. Yankees are like, let's get a guy who was great three years ago and give him all the money in the world to kind of yeah. suck for us. But like Jeter and and Brocious Rivera and, and yeah. Bernie Brocious Williams. and Scott Bernie Williams. Williams. Wow, yeah, I mean those guys were those guys were homegrown dudes. Mario yeah. Rivera, Scott, Scott Wetland. Yeah, Scott before Wetland. him, Scott Wetland before he diddled kids. You know? <laughs> yeah, before he, before he touched those kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we won't even get into the Michael Jackson thing. Uh, we, well, we've we all talked time. about that too much. I want to ask you your favorite sports movies of all time. Oh, oh. dude, that's great. That's two, uh, number I, one. What's your number one? Number one. I we both had like. No, we'll Go ahead. I'm different with you. I I think Bad News Bears, the first Bad News Bears. I just watched it again. Okay. Uh, you got to put up with some end bombs being dropped, which is a little hard from to hear it from kids. But the fact that they lose the final game to me makes it one of the best sports movies ever. So you think Empire is the best Star Wars movie then? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Empire I'm going Strikes with Rookie back. of the Year. Uh, <laughs> rookie of the Year? Uh, most, most Valuable Primate is up there for it's me. It's pretty but, fucking uh, good. A monkey that skates? Uh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Air Bud. Air, Air, Air Bud. Air Bud. It's, uh, but, yeah. but, I like but Air Bud. I love Bad News Bears. Bad News is great because Buttermaker, because he was drinking. No, the first scene, he pulled literally crack windshield, Cadillac convertible, pool equipment yeah. in the back. He pulls up to the front. It's the morning. He cracks open a beer, takes a whiskey bottle, pours, and pours it in the beer, into the beer, and it's all over the place. Drinks it, and then he goes out. That's a very something. Midwestern thing to do. It right? is. It is totally a Midwestern. You, thing you walk do. into a bar at like 10 still wish it was legal. Yeah, you walk into It'll a bar real. at ten a.m. In, in the Midwest, <laughs> and the, you'll get a shot in the beer for five bucks. Shot in the beer. beer. Shot in beer. So the other scene to me that makes the Bad News Bears that movie amazing is. Vic Morrow, who died in crazy uh, helicopter crash. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. Uh, May rest in peace. Vic Morrow. Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Yeah, Twilight Zone. Where you got to get decapitated. Yeah, right? by yeah. a helicopter. All right. So this guy plays is the coach of the Yankees. The guy who hits his kid, and then the mom takes the kid off after he holds the ball. Unbelievable, right? Before the championship game against the Bears. All right, against the Bad News Bears, they go into the Yankees dugout. All right, and we see his like psych up speech for his team. Unreal. As an actor. Okay, like we've seen all these things. We've had great acting teachers, and no one could have possibly prepared him to do this op this speech to his team this way. He comes into the dugout, so low key. He looks at all the kids. He just says, "If you lose this game, See, at I'm this not level, talk to you about winning this game. I'm not going to tell you about this winning this game. If you lose this game." It's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. Okay, so he tells these little kids in a low voice. Yeah. He brings it down. The actor decides to play it down. What a great Fucking choice. Because yeah. you would have gone fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, in the new one or in a in an amped up one, you're like, he's the villain, so he's got to be a bad guy. No, no, no. He talks to these guys. Played it fucking like real. He's, yeah. Like he's the real in guy. on a secret with these guys. As an actor, he's saying, we're in this together. I'm with you right now. You it's, cannot lose this game. And he motivates them in a weird way. So and my, they win. So my favorite sports movie of all time is Breaking Away. I fucking love that movie so much. Cycling movie in Bloomington, Indiana. It's won the, the Oscar for uh, uh, Best Screenplay. screenplay. Yeah. Un-fucking believable movie. Uh, Paul Dooley, who we've met like later in life, who plays the dad he of Dave Stoll. Well, yeah. Oh my God! His when Paul do for me the scene of when Paul Dooley is at the used car lot. He's a used car salesman, and they're doing the little five hundred. And he doesn't like, accept his son because his son like wants to be Italian. Wants to be Italian. He's shaving his legs. He's singing Italian songs. He's eating that ID food and this and that. It was like <laughs> it was it was you know, but it was 1977, 78, whatever it was, and it was the cutters and it was the haves versus the have nots. It was the townies, the townies versus, yeah, yeah, versus yeah. the rich like fraternity guys. And I don't know. We grew up in St. Louis, and we grew up like lower middle class. We always had that feeling. And, and still do even in this industry of like it's us against them and like we're just these ragtag we never had much growing up and so like we always felt that way I remember watching the cutters and I'm like we feel we identify with these guys like we are with with the cutters and what they had to go through and we were rooting for them so much and his dad is like listening to the call of the little 500 in one of the used cars on the lot because it's they got just, the numbers still on the front of the car like the price yeah, 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 is yeah. on the car <laughs> written and in chalk on the front of the car <laughs> and it's like and the dad's in the car and he never really accepted it and he's in there and he's like and the announcers announcing Dave Stoller. He's coming around. He's like Stoller going in a second. He's making in the turn. Here he comes, and he just in that moment turns on the eye. It's like I have tears in my eyes thinking about it now. Turns on the car and just drives it off the lot over to the little five hundred to see his son win the fucking thing. It is like <laughs> as far as movie making, it's just it's a beauty and I it holds up today. Like Dennis Quay, Jackie Earl Haley, who was in both the bad news. Daniel Band, Stern. Yeah. Daniel Stern was unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, Paul Daniel Dick. Stern just that joke where uh 
the guy goes, how you doing, man? And he's like, well, this whole Middle East thing's kind of bothering me, which is hilarious <laughs> for like this like cutter guy in town. And he was just funny. They were funny. And, and we were going back to Bloomington to do stand up. Uh, we do. There's a great club there called the uh, Comedy Attic. Great guy who runs it, Jared. And we go and like you go walk around the campus and it's all limestone. It's all limestone buildings. So they that's a great moment, too, in that movie where the dad uh, is Paul Dooley is, Paul Dooley is with his son. And uh, uh, Christopher, Dennis Christopher, Dennis great Christopher, actor, another great actor. So, he, so he's with his son, and they're standing outside the library. The library, and uh, and the son says, "I'm a cutter," and he goes, "You're not a cutter. I'm a cutter. You know who built this building? I built this building. I cut these stones that built this building. You're the son of a cutter." And he wanted to identify, like in that moment, the son wanted to get close to his dad and say, "Like I've." figured it out i'm not i'm not going to try and be some italian guy or some university guy i'm going to be you and the dad's like you want to be me you got to earn being me yeah i cut the stones Unreal. phenomenal, what, phenomenal. Was, what was yours I, I i don't think i've ever asked you this oh. we've been doing this show for a long time i don't know it's a good question. There's so many good sports movies. Are like, you a you Hoosiers go, fan? I love Hoosiers. Fucking great movie. See, see my, mine's different Does because of where I was in the the experience of it. So, I still miss seeing Movies in theaters. Mm -hmm. Netflix is always Netflix, and it's, it's great. It's fine, but going to a movie in the theater is the yes, best. Yes, and, and, and as a kid. Yeah. And especially Popcorn. when your parents take you, and they're like, I hey, do it with my kids all the time. I'm like, go to the front it. row. Yep, Here's yes. all your, your popcorn candy, candy popcorn, everything. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, for me, right. and it was the, the very first movie that my parents had took me to to see in a theater, and it was The Natural. Oh, so shit. as a kid, great movie. Run away from them, front row. That was with two other buddies from the neighborhood. We just sat and stared up at the screen. And it was just pure magic. Yeah. Everything your mom says about Robert Redford and how he's the ultimate movie Good star, looking. him and Paul Newman, <laughs> oh, it'll never guys. be like this ever again. They were the best. In that movie, and I didn't, you know, I'm a kid. I don't know who that is. It, it, then I see Robert Redford for the first like time. 30 feet tall. And, and you walk out of there and you're like, you're, you're absolutely right. When the fat kid hands him the, he gives him the, oh, yeah, the fat man. kid. Yeah, when the he fucking, go special. pick me a winner. Yeah, go, go, go pick me a winner, a winner. When, yeah. When the, uh, bad breaks. Yeah. The bad the, breaks. And just the, that golden light where he's throwing with his kid and, the the, and his, even his kid is pimpy. Like whoever they cast is that kid. I was like, Great. fuck yeah, that would be their kid. <laughs> yeah. If they made a little baby and, and he grew up, that's exactly what that kid would look like. with the glove that's like somehow small. Smaller than his hand. Yeah. You're like, how the fuck is that smaller? Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah. I, so, I like Hoosiers. Yeah. Hoosiers. Uh, I really like that one. I think that's for sports movies. It's one of the more complex. Oh yeah, dude. Movies yeah. Movies that I think has ever been made because there's so many different storylines. There's the kid who the alcoholic father, the alcoholic father, the, the fall kid. from grace coach who punched a guy in college, and so the only reason you're getting him is because he yeah he's yeah a winning yeah. Coach, yeah there's the so much going on. The the strong. Female figure oh, who, in great. that time, Barbara has Hershey. no place. Oh, in Hershey. Like she has no place in life in small town Indiana as a loud ass smart woman. Right. Like, but you, also has to defend the town. Yeah. At all the time. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just that like moment where he just says, like, to himself, not to anyone. He says, "Welcome to Indiana basketball." Opens, opens the, the door, door and the layup drill. Layup drill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Layup Fuck drill. It. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Me, Indiana basketball. When he pulls out that tape measure yeah. and it's right. ten, ten same, feet, same as any other rim. And, yeah. and I was like, "It's God, a perfect." There's just so many iconic scenes in that movie, yeah. man. And it's the one where he goes to the shooter or the kid's house and he's shooting by himself, and that that whole fucking dialogue is super mm -hmm. good. Amazing. Jimmy Chitwood. Amazing. Coach stays. Coach Jimmy Chitwood. Yeah. Coach stays. Coach stays. This point in the show, we get to the drinking bro of the week. It's somebody who inspired you or helped you up along your journey. I mean, I. This is weird because you guys are actually brothers, and we've yeah. never had brothers on the show uh, before. Bro. It's him. No. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's him. Uh, but who who was the who was the guy for you guys yeah. growing up that that really inspired you and helped you? We've had a bunch of people inspire us. I, I'm gonna go. This is it's not a cop out, but I I'm gonna go and give examples of why we talked about our dad earlier. I think our dad was he was such without knowing it, he was such a key person in yeah. sort of driving us on this path. So he was a really funny guy. In, but not in like writing jokes. Like he wasn't a joke craftsman, but like, you know, on Saturdays he would take us out. He would run errands with us because he worked all week. And, and on Saturday he would go into the office on Saturdays and he'd, he'd work, but he'd take us with him. 
And my favorite is that like he'd go to run his errands and like leave us in the car to like listen to Cardinals baseball or whatever. Leave us two kids in the car with the car running, basically saying to, like <laughs> any child molester here, Come on you want in. these two? It's a buffet. Of kids. Super There's wide. two of them. Hey, and this one like. delivers itself. <laughs> it's yeah. right. Just drive away. Keys are in it, guys. Just take them out. But we'd be sitting in the car and watch him go give his like cleaning up or something to the dry cleaner. And within like 30 seconds, the person would be laughing, smiling. Like he he just he just had this thing about him. When you're watching that over and over as a kid, you're like, oh, that's that's valuable. Making people laugh. That's actually a really good skill. And the other thing is, like, right before we were in in high school, he bought the family business, which was selling alteration supplies and Velcro, like being a middleman. So if you go and get a suit at Nordstrom or whatever and it gets all tailored up, all the tailoring supplies are from him. Anyway, so you know, not a glamorous job by any stretch of the imagination. And went he went deep in debt. He went deep in debt. And, you know, you're 16 years old going, holy shit, dad's going deep in debt just so he can, over the next 10 years, pay it off and then have Hopefully. a little bit of money. Hopefully. Hopefully. We yeah, don't know no. what the economy is like. We don't. All he did was he's like, I bet on myself. He kept on saying this. I will bet on myself to break through this and do this. Talk about sports debt. That's the guy who's like, give me the ball. Give me yeah. the ball. Give me yeah. the ball and I'll finish this for my family. And you look at that and now as a parent and, you know, I got kids and whatnot, but even taking the leap to go into the ridiculous world of entertainment and it is ridiculous. It is not fair. We have lost jobs in the worst fucking possible ways ever that you're like, I can't believe we lost this job for this or we didn't get this job or this to happen or this fell apart because somebody got hired over this person. It's like never even our fault. And so, but, but we're like, we bet on ourselves. We'll figure it out and we'll figure something out. And so those two things, without him even saying, this is where I want you to go. And I don't think he wanted us to go. He wanted us to go to law school. He wanted us to be fine and kind of like make a, that sort of life for ourselves. But those two things are really big and inspiring for me because I'm like, shit, that, that's what we do on a daily basis. We bet on ourselves and we yeah. make people laugh. I'm like, there you go. You just gave it to us. I would say uh, I'm going to go later in our life and I'm going to say our favorite comedian when we were in college was a guy named Andy Kindler who we're friends with. Amazing comedian. I'm going to give him credit now. He goes to the yeah. Montreal Comedy Festival every year and delivers a hilarious ripping state of the industry address where he just basically rips everything. Rips everything. He's it's so funny. He's such a great comedian, still doing it today. But he was really inspiring to us because he was the first comedian we'd ever seen who made a joke and then commented on the joke that he just made. And like made now it. everybody does it. Right. Like everybody does it but now. He but he did a whole joke about a crock pot. I'll never forget. He was like, you know, crock pot, great. If I'm hungry in 18 hours, that's great for me. He's like, where's the crackers? And then, so that's the joke. All right, crowd laughs at that. And he's like, eight years of mime lessons, and I still open the cabinet into my face. Hilarious joke about the joke about the physicality they Fucking just did. Brilliant. Loved him. All right, so Randy and I were students at the University of Michigan. Uh, we brought him to come to Michigan. We had applied to law school, we had gotten into separate law schools. We were on our way to maybe going to law school. We were like, we brought him to And then go seriously into debt. You know yeah. what I mean? Go, go like $90,000 into debt and have to work our way out of it. We talked to Andy before the show and we're like, hey man, we love you. We're going to perform in front of you. Afterwards, we're going to take you out for dinner. Give us your honest opinion if you think this is something we can even, and we don't want to put too much pressure on you, but just be honest with what you think. So we did our set, 25 minutes or whatever. Then he got up and did an hour and did great. Then we took him out to, for pancakes and we said, what do you think? And he said, okay, here's what I think. He's like, I think you guys are funny. I think you have uh, something interesting and compelling. I think you got to get rid of your entire act. Which, by the way, I'm so glad he said that. Because he's like, I think if you get rid of your act and you move to New York or L.A. and get into a comedy scene that like feels good for you and you're pushed by other good comedians, I bet you guys will be on TV by the time you're 25. That's, really? That's all we needed to hear. But most, right? most people, if you tell them to drop their entire act, they quit. That they're, would be the quitting point. Done, yeah. But for us, the fact that he said, you got to get rid of your act because it's not equal to what I think you guys can do, that was the most important piece of the whole of what he said, right? Because in that moment, we knew that he wasn't bullshitting. Right. The other stuff, because he gave a very real and honest and harsh critique of what we did, but said that I think you guys can do it. And so we, I remember that night, we went home and called our parents and we're like, like we're, we're not going to law school. We're not going to law school. They were like, what? We're like, hey, <laughs> well, I, I we're going to uh, defer. I think entertainment is a lot like uh, 
in, in leadership and entertainment is all like, what if? Like, yeah. what if you did this? Yeah. Like, yeah. planting those ideas. Mm-hmm. Well, and or in, just being willing to or go being out willing, yeah. Or being willing to believe in yourself. So we yeah. said to our parents, look, we're going to be smart. We're not going to be crazy. We'll defer for a year, and we're going to move to either New York or L.A., and we're going to figure it out because this guy believes And it. we're not going to ask a penny from you. We're, we're going to do, do it on our own. We'll, we'll get, get jobs. jobs. We'll support ourselves. So and I think they were like, okay. That, that's life. a gamble you can make because you're not basically asking us to fund this thing. And but but you know what? He was right. We had an MTV show when we were 25. That was three years later. Fuck. We were on TV. It's unreal. So Andy <laughs> and Andy is still someone we look up to, someone we still love performing with, someone we still feel connected with. But had he not said that to us, I don't know if we would have had the guts to try. We didn't have it in our family. No one we knew was doing it. We're from St. Louis, went to school in Michigan. Well, they weren't doing entertainment, but your dad grabbed his nuts and fucking that stepped was it. up and yeah. did thing, right? That's, That's it. it. And he did that in So a it was the combo of those yeah. things together that was like, let's bet on us. That's, That's awesome absolutely. to have that still. Though. I love that. To, yeah. to yeah. still, be, still be hanging with him and performing with him. It's kind of yeah, cool. I know. He's a great yeah. dude. Yeah, great it's dude. amazing. Where can everybody find you guys podcast-wise, social okay. media-wise? So uh, for sports fans out there, we do a podcast every week called View from the Cheap Seats. We've had everybody from Bill Burr, uh, you know, Blake Griffin. One of the Bob, biggest shows of all time. Bob yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it used to be called Scalabro Country. Now it's called View from the Cheap Seats. We love that if show. If you like sports, it is a real and funny look at sports along with uh, uh, comedians who know their sports or athletes. And in, in my opinion, even though we host a sports show, yeah. it's probably the best. Oh, oh dude, well, thank dead, you. Dead, dead serious, it's, I completely mean that. For sports, it, it, it's you guys at Rappaport up there. My yeah, yeah. I, even then, like I think you guys wreck everything on Barstool and, and everything oh, else. Yeah. So. Thanks, man. Yes, thank you. It. So yeah. there's that one, and then there's Dumb People Town, where, we again, we <laughs> think the world's getting dumber. We always get like stories sent to us, usually from Florida. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys know. So I've, like people doing dumb things, and we break down with a guest, like with our co-host, Dan Van Kirk, who you guys would love as well. Uh, just basically, here are the... the the dumb things that happen in the world and let's try and understand what were the 10 decisions that led this like drunk woman to take off her shirt climb up a front loader to get into her apartment and like pass out <laughs> like that is just the or the guy who fought his reflect he got so drunk he fought his reflection in, in a, a bar window. window yes and okay. lost and lost oh he lost yeah, yeah, why so. the guy do all his moves yeah. he's like yeah. why is he fucking you, know. right. you gotta you gotta knock yourself down though to, <laughs> yeah, to bring yourself that's, back that's, up yeah. and that's do you guys a, have a stand up special streaming yeah so we have uh, two stand up specials uh, one on on uh, Netflix called What Are We Talking About? We did that in 2014. It's got the Richard Simmons story that we kind of oh, talked about here. Awesome. That's on there. Awesome. And then we have another one on Stars. So if you have the Stars app or Stars. I do. And we're on, awesome. uh, hey, look at that. We're on Instagram at Sklar Brothers, S K L A R, and on Twitter at Sklar Brothers. Just follow us and come out and see us. We're going to be in Dallas. And so, you know, we're this weekend, yeah, we're, we're all gonna send. We're going to send the Drinking Bros out to you. Yeah, we'll send, send the, the Drinking Bros. bros out tag send tag out. the Sklar Brothers. This has been a personal pleasure of ours. Thank awesome. you. you guys are on the show. Yeah. And I also want to thank you for uh, Jim. Harbaugh is your coach. Yes. Um, that was <laughs> the greatest thing in an Ohio State family. That's the best kiss we've ever had. I'll give it up as always, man. I will give it up. Thank Thanks you, for being here, gentlemen. We appreciate it.